Sup, you chuckle fucks. It's your boy, Dark Raku here with What If um, Issei Had Anime Powers or whatever the fuck I'm going to name this. Probably later. I have not really much time, so other than that, bye soon, yeah. Or not, bye soon, yeah. Uh, fucking, what the fuck am I going on? Sorry, I'm just still a little tired. Not the point. Let me begin. This is What If, let me shut the fuck up. But yeah, other than that, yeah, let me begin. So, if you get into mostly Issei. Issei is right now kind of in class, right now sweat shopping. The reason why is because Akuno is none other than here right now trying to ask him to go towards Reyes Grimmery's office. <laughs> yeah, that ain't happening any fucking time soon. He doesn't care. And what the fuck, the devil. Mostly it's been happening the whole couple, uh, couple of days. Literally since Monday through Friday. Ever since he kind of chose Junko as his wife. Now, of course, we where it will. Not just Akuno appears. Konako, Kiba, and another girl named Zenobia actually appears. But yeah. Well, not Zenobia, but mostly a girl named, well, Asia. But yeah. Now, of course, Issei has completely ignored them and sometimes uses his abilities to tell them to fuck off with a bit of conquer talking. Because, yo, he does not care about shit like this. He literally. Is someone who just be watching anime 24-7. Telling people to fuck off. And yeah, you get the point. So of course, this is where, well, mostly that was happening. And this is where, well, uh, yeah, you see definitely use some Conqueror's Hawking. Not some Conqueror's Hawking, but just ha uh, Conqueror's Hawking. This is where, well, he managed to knock them out or either kind of push them away with his scary aura. But not the point. This is where, well, we go into mostly... A time skip of him dealing with also Junko's sister. Now, Junko's sister was basically asking him to come along with her after school most of the time. Yeah, that didn't really happen because Junko's sister, mostly Makoro, has also tried to forcibly attack him, but mostly since Masuda's also skill in those kind of assets, mostly in using weapons, he can easily block her off pretty easily. Which makes Makara shocked and amazed with someone else being this skill. But this is where, well, she then tries to attack mostly Matsuda one time. Well, not one time, mostly, uh, try to attack mostly Isu with kind of sending a kind of dart into his neck. That really didn't happen because Isu completely dodged that. Like, he just twisted his head to the left because he knew that attack was going to hit him. And just said, hmm, it seems someone's still trying to knock me out. But yeah, that is still happening with mostly all that until mostly we go into well, uh, what's it called? Uh, mostly we go into Issei POV of wondering why people keep attacking him, either bothering, annoying him, blah 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 blah, or even asking them out because literally Rainer or mostly Yuma, known as Yuma, uh, yeah, yeah, mostly Amato Yuma or uh, Yuma Amato. Kind of appear, kind of asking Issei for a date. Now, Issei did not care. He really did not even want to go on this date. He really said yes, but that's really a lie. He was not going on that date. He just wanted to ignore her entirely. He knew that this girl was a fallen angel. A uh, chick that's really tried to kill him because of the strange power that he's shown. Yes, it seems maybe these other people who watched that rating game Battle Royale probably realized that he's dangerous. But eh, who really cares? What are they gonna go into do to him? Fight him? Yeah, half of them can't even kill him. Like he probably just say no to half of it. But yeah. But of course we go into mostly a time skip of well, what's going to happen next, but yeah. But of course he completely is just like mostly is going home, watching anime and completely and not really caring about anything. Now I should mention one thing about his parents. His parents are not really alive. So entirely, he just lives alone most of the time. But this is where, well, mostly Issei is just kicking back, relaxing, and watching anime. Until the days pass. Yeah, every time. He's that type of person where he just goes home and done. He does cook for himself and other things, but not the point. But this is where, well, mostly we go into that date of Yuma. Yuma never got that date because Issei never showed up. Like, he never fucking showed up even once to her. Like, she waited there at least 40 minutes, one hour, two hours, and also a devil was there waiting. Yeah, it was Rias. She was shocked to believe that Issei never showed up. 
He didn't care. He's he's a complete menace. This is what well, mostly that was still happening. But yeah, of course there was also Junko in the bushes trying to see if Ise would show up. Yeah, Ise never showed up because he didn't care. Cared enough, fucking enough. But yeah, Makoro was also there, and yeah, you get the point. This is where well, mostly someone walks up to mostly um. So yeah, mostly Ise never showed up. So of course this is where well, he just didn't care too much. But yeah. But of course, we go into a couple of mostly days time skip. Yuma showed up at Issei's house right now, completely pissed. Now, the reason why she was completely pissed is because she also got a note from some random dude who got like mostly banana hair, some his like hairstyle, and just kind of just gave him a uh, gave her or gave her a note saying that yeah, Issei's not showing up because he's lazy as fuck. Making her pissed as shit, but this is where Kazutora walks away after that like a chill. It was really never meant, to, well mostly Issa never gave a task to Kazutora to actually go chill her. It was just mostly him being a chill. He's just an asshole half the time. But this is where, well, we go into mostly a time skip of, well, uh, the next day, or not next day, the back into mostly Yuma while Yuma's there. Yuma is now not in her kind of like, uh, mostly... She's not in her kind of, like, human state. She's right now in her fallen state. And she is completely pissed. Really completely pissed. Entirely, she never thought of ever being rejected or abandoned by a human. This is where, well, she is completely, and I mean literally completely pissed. Completely pissed, angry, and annoyed from the fact that this human dares to kind of just treat her like some normal fucking whore in the streets by just like not showing up to the date but yeah you see switch off seeing rainer right now in this bds outfit and this where he says what the fuck i never call a stripper can you please get out of my house this is right well mostly she says do you not remember me my name is yuma no wait yuma damn okay so you were a prostitute when you actually walk up to me this is where well she said what no i'm not this is just my outfit, you fucking fucker. This is where, well, mostly they say, okay, why are you in my, well, not why are you in my house, why are you in my front doorstep, and how do you find me anyway? That's creepy. Very creepy. She growls at him and says, don't you dare change the fucking subject. Tell me why the hell you weren't at the date. Date? Oh, shit, I forgot about that entirely. Yeah, I just didn't care too much at all. Why should I care about going on a date with a fallen angel? I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to get killed. This is where what Yuma want her eyes and say, so you did know that I was a fallen angel before this. Yep. You bastard. I'm going to. Yeah, you're not going to do anything. Grab it. Times 500. She smashes down to the ground and she was shocked. Mostly Issei seems to be able to control gravity. Issei says, well, how about this, Yuma Amato? Or... Whatever your, uh, what's it called, fallen angel name is. This is where, well, he says, eyes glow for a second, says, ah, your name is Rainer. Hmm, <laughs> a very, very weak fallen angel, but that's okay. I can easily kick the shit of you anyway. But not the point. Tell me, who sent you and why did they send some weak, pathetic idiot to go take out a, well, strong being like me, the strongest sorcerer? This is where, well, she growls and glares at Mosi Issei. She says, why the hell would I tell you anything? Hmm, you're right. You don't need to tell me anything. All you gotta know is you're going to die because you're weak. You're completely weak and you can't do anything. This is where, well, she glares at him, but of course she can't really do anything. Because it's true. Because fighting against Issei is like fighting against God at this point. But yeah. So, of course, with Rainer kind of getting annoyed and trying to get out of mostly Issei's grasp, she tries to attack him, but this where, well, a red wing actually stops her from actually attacking him, from actually making a light spear. Issei catches the light spear and just shatters it. Issei says, was that really all you have? Pathetic. This is where, well, Rainer was shocked because literally a red wing appears blocking the light spear and destroying it because Issei just grabs it. This is where, well, mostly she said, how? Are you an angel? Are you a fallen angel? Uh, this word. Mostly Issei says, no. I'm a supreme god. 
the, he literally just took something from Majin Park. But yeah, he he read the mostly webtoon and mostly of the God of High School. But he remembers being, uh, seeing Majin Park with red wings instead of being like normal black or whatever. So of course, or white or whatever. This went well. Well, see, she gopes, wasn't expecting to fight a supreme god, and expecting to die to him. Just where, well, Issei then has a very evilish grin on his face and says, How about this? I won't kill you if you become mine. This is where, well, Issei just said that with just a little sarcastic. And she right now folds and says, I'll become yours. Please don't kill me. This is where, well, mostly Issei was shocked to actually see a fallen angel like her just give up so fast with her pride. He just says, I'm just joking. No, I, 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 this is where she passes out. This is where, well, mostly he says, was I using too much power? This is where, well, he realized he was. He made her pass out with using just a bit of his, like, aura of mostly the supreme deity. Yes, he was in his supreme deity, and he was like, oh, shit. I'm using too much of Majin Park's powers. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. Well, should probably be going, then. Or this is where he picks her up and just like brings her inside. But yeah, we'll pick, yeah, picks her up and brings her inside. But other than that, I'll be leaving it off here for part five. Sorry, I know these what ifs are short, but I have to be going and I have things to do. And it's just a lot of damn shit. But yeah, other than the last part was like 30 minutes. But right now I have to be going. Bye.